I want to welcome to the set another Liberal MP, Liberal Senator for New South Wales, Connie Fear of Anti Worlds. Thanks for joining us, Connie. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good, thanks. Lots to talk to you about, but I want to get your thoughts first on Ida Buttrose. Now, you've always been active in the area of multicultural affairs and a great supporter of Multicultural Australia, so you won't disagree with her wanting to get different ethnicities inside the ABC's uh, uh, ranks, uh, sure. But is that a misplaced priority? Doesn't she need to focus on some uh, political diversity at the ABC? I think political diversity, and having heard your comments, I agree wholeheartedly with you. I think the issue with the ABC is the time has come where we have to have a discussion about whether we need two public broad broadcasters or just one public broadcaster. Now, I'm on the record, Chris, as believing that the time has come when the ABC and SBS should be merged. And that's a serious discussion to be had because all Australians uh, should have uh, a pu one public broadcaster, I believe, but the public broadcaster should uh, produce content for all Australians, irrespective of who they are, where they come from. So that's really, for me, the primary discussion. Oh, so great. if you really want to talk about diversity at the ABC, I think the time has come to have that discussion. Well, there's nothing that SBS doesn't do, or there's nothing that SBS does that doesn't come under the ABC Charter. I mean, the SBS does some great work, but it's all covered by the ABC Charter. The ABC Charter is supposed to look after uh, multicultural issues and diversity, so it could all be roped under the same umbrella, and they have so many channels, uh, digital and otherwise, look, these days. When you look at what SBS is doing, and you look at the availability of diverse content, particularly in the private, uh, private sphere. Uh, Australians who want diversity are very, very well served in Australia. So they don't need, actually, to go to SBS for their diversity. If so I you're going to push know. within government to look at well, that I, merger? It, would say, it could save hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, of, of course dollars. it would, and it's something that I've advocated years and years ago. And uh, I think whilst different iterations of government have had a think about it. I think no one's had the political will to actually take it forward. What about political diversity at the ABC, though? Because this is getting to the stage where they're doing serious damage to this country. They pump out misinformation on climate, misinformation on border protection. They seem to be uh, uh, running a, a green left uh, uh, sort of oppositionist line day in, day out, and nothing seems to change. But, Chris, this has been going on for years and years. Like, but I remember... you've been in government for years and years. I know. Why don't you do and something about in it? In 2005, I became a senator, and part of my early work as a senator was looking at bias at the ABC. And I remember at one stage, I produced two volumes. I followed over three years uh, the activities of the ABC in relation to about 43 different issues. And I sent it to when Morris Human became the chairman, the ABC of Bias, Volume 1 and 2. Now, that was happening then. And again, Chris, it gets down to political will. If you don't have the political will to tackle these issues, we'll be talking about it um, in years to come. Well, the only thing is to cut their budget. Unless you start hacking into their budget, when are they going to reform? They're basically barracking for a Labor victory at the last election and uh, they didn't get what they wanted. The, the, there's nothing, no change now. They're misinforming uh, their viewers and listeners. And unless uh, someone says, well, well, we'll trim your budget, they won't reform. But you will have to have this discussion, I think, in the context of going back to the point that we made earlier about diversity already existing. Mm. Like, when I was Minister for Multicultural Affairs, um, when you look at my ethnic media list, it was about 500 different organisations, whereas we know that when we look at the mainstream media in this country, well, you've got 30, 40, 50. But compared to what is out there in that space, a time has come when we have to start rationalising that. Now, you're on the Conservative side of the Liberal Party. Uh, you were a Tony Abbott supporter. Uh, you were not a Malcolm Turnbull supporter. Are you, as he would describe it, a reactionary? Well, I have to say I was a little bit... Uh, I chortled somewhat when I read those comments uh, this morning. I think, uh, regrettably for Malcolm, I think he's trying to find relevance after being um, deposed. Look, the reality is that um, Malcolm 
was deposed because he took us too far to the left. And as somebody, I, as the person who was actually, who resigned on that day and tendered my resignation and in my letter of resignation, Chris, I outlined very clearly what my reasons were. And one of those was the fact that I perceived that the party had gone too far to the left. Now, as a senior conservative from here, from New South Wales. Uh, I was also particularly concerned about issues that had happened in relation to same-sex marriage. But Chris, you have to look at, for our, ordin for our ordinary party members and for those people, um, particularly of family and faith in Australia, who joined the Liberal Party, joined abide by our constitution. When you do read that federal constitution, for those people to have seen the objectives of that constitution trashed, not under a Labor government, but under a Liberal government that they helped to elect. You can appreciate why there was the, the concern in the Liberal Party that then led to subsequent events. All right. Well, as you know, I was Malcolm's chief of staff when he was in opposition. I have to keep mentioning that. Sorry to bore you, but just by way of declaration yeah. uh, for, for everything. But, of course, my point is that he lost the leadership in 2009 because he's, he was trying to do a climate deal with Labor. And it was exactly the same last year. He was trying to deliver a climate and energy policy that Labor states and the Labor federally could agree to. So um, that's just a matter of fact. But I suppose to... To, to bolster his argument, I mean, his point is, uh, and, and, and where there's that element of truth in his argument, is that the Liberal Party, the coalition parties, have torn themselves apart on climate and energy policy repeatedly. The point is, though, voters have shown where they prefer things to be. That's precisely. And so for the man um, there lodging his vote at the ballot box, and we saw at the last federal election... Uh, Yes, we, uh, Morrison ran a good campaign, but he was aided by Labor's dud policies. And we know about negative gearing. We know about the other issues. But one of those issues was the assault on the coal industry. And that had ramifications in, no, uh, in Joel Fitzgibbon's seat of a swing of almost 10%, and in also in Queensland. Ordinary Australians who have grown up uh, with cheap power prices and coal-fired power stations can't understand today why we're paying the prices that we're paying. They want clean air, they want clean water, and they want clean food, and they want low power prices. We have all this coal, it's good, clean coal, which we're shipping off overseas, and yet we're not taking the advantage in Australia. And that's what hasn't been explained, I think, to ordinary Australians. Tell us about where all this uh, ends up uh, for the Liberal Party when you've got Malcolm Turnbull making these comments. He's got a memoir coming out next year. It's, it is kind of interesting because all the uh, informed analysis of the election result and what's happened since, um, even from Labor front benches, is that it's Labor went too far on climate and energy policy and they've got to wind back closer to where the coalition is. Whereas Malcolm Turnbull's arguing the coalition needs to go further in climate action. Look, I think the caravan's moved on. The electorate has spoken. You just had to look at some of the disgraceful activity at the last federal election. I worked very much on the Warringah campaign. And to watch uh, Zali Stegall and get up and, and the disgraceful behaviour during that uh, election campaign... It worked for them in that seat. There they were. They, Chris, they got out of their gas-guzzling SUVs with the Stop Adani uh, bumper stickers and went straight up to get the Zali Stegall and then went over to the Get Up people to get the how to vote for, how to give your preferences for Zali. And then the disgraceful behaviour with the 12-year-old who thought the world was going to end because of climate change. I mean, we're seeing this hysteria which I don't think Australian voters are really going to buy. Now, the Senate uh, Parliament's back next week uh, and there's some analysis in The Australian this morning that looks uh, showing how the Senate, while it's easier than it used to be, still some blockages there. You might not get all the government's legislation through. To me, is a bit pessimistic because uh, especially Jackie Lambie seems to be holding out all the time and also Centre Alliance. If you get Jackie Lambie and Centre Alliance on any of the key issues, you, you're pretty much there. And they both seem to be um, people you can deal with, negotiate with. Chris, this is situation normal. People forget that since Federation, uh, we have only had, I think it's about four occasions where a government has had control of the Senate. Now, that's not to say we saw it in the Labor years with the Labor-Green Alliance. 
Uh, but the reality is this is what it's been. Now, the recent changes in the Senate have delivered less independence in the Senate, but this is the fact of life. We've always had to negotiate, and if we do it respectfully and we do it with people of goodwill and you know, Rex and, 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 and Sterling and Jackie and uh, Pauline and Malcolm uh, and others. Um, they've been there before. They know the game. Uh, but they also understand that they have to respect mandates and respect the mandate of this government. So I'm sure we will, we will find an appropriate uh, way to deal with these issues, as we have done and as we've continued to do over many years when we were in government. Thanks for joining us, Senator. Thanks a lot, Chris.